Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, I want to officially welcome you to our worship service today. Uh, you are watching live from Community of Grace Lutheran Church here in Peoria, Arizona. My name is Tim Wright. I am the senior pastor here. And this is a very, very special day in the life of our congregation. We are celebrating 15 years of mission and ministry together. Actually, our official birthday was yesterday, but we're celebrating today. And uh, last year at this time, I wasn't able to be with you because I had just had surgery on my shoulder, and so I came to you via video, and now this year you can't be with me, so we're coming to you again via video, and yet here we are celebrating 15 years of bold, reckless grace together. And uh, I want to just tell you how glad we are to have you with us. This is such a special evening. And I'm going to give you a little assignment here in a moment, but first of all, we worship together in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together. Gracious God, it is good to be together, even though it's uh, not the way we envisioned when we planned this service all those months ago. And yet, in spite of all that's happening around us, we know that life is at work, that grace is at work, because you're a God who never gives up on us. You're a God who climbs into our suffering. You're a God who climbs into our pain through the death and resurrection of Jesus in order to bring hope and encouragement. And so, Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight, this service would not only be an inspiration for those of us who call this our church home, but it would also be a springboard to the next thing that you have for us as a congregation as we launch into year 16 in such a remarkable time as this. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray that you'd be honored and glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to just give you a sense of what was going on 15 years ago when we started this church. So, 15 years ago, on March 27th, not only did Community of Grace start, but so did the TV show Grey's Anatomy. Isn't that amazing? And, and we're both still on, and we're both still streaming. It's amazing. George W. Bush was the president of the United States of America. The number one song was Candy Shop. Some of you remember that. Candy Shop, Candy Shop, oh, Candy, Candy Shop, can't. No? No. All right. Uh, on that day... 369,099 babies were born. The most popular name, March 27, 2005, was Jacob for boys and Emma for girls. And it was Easter Sunday. We were celebrating the resurrection. And uh, we're celebrating the resurrection today as well. In the midst of a lot of fear and chaos around us, we're celebrating God's grace together. So as we now prepare to receive our offering, just a couple of notes that we have just completed 15 years of mission and ministry together as a congregation. And knowing where we have been helps us to launch into our future together. And so even though we are not here physically together, we still are together in mission and ministry because God still is using his church here on earth. And so we have a number of ways that you can give. You can either send a check to our physical address, and I believe that is provided for you. You'll see there also is a QR code that you can um, hold a device up to and prepare to take a picture, and it will take you to our website. And again, you can just go to boldrecklessgrace.org, and you can go to the tile for online giving, and that will be there for you. And so as we prepare to receive your gifts, would you please join me for a word of prayer? Good and gracious God, we thank you for this call that you have given your church to be present with your people in this world. And so please give us creativity and wisdom as we seek to follow your call, as we seek to be present with your people. Would you please move us to be generous with the things that you have entrusted to us? And would you please use what we have to share, to share your grace with this world? And we give you thanks this day and always in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, most pastors, uh, particularly as they get older, collect two, three, or four stories, and they put it in their grab bag, and they pull out these stories every once in a while for big moments. And these stories for pastors tend to be stories that for them capture the essence of what grace is about, the essence of what the church is about. And in those big moments, they'll take those stories out and tell them again to help refocus the congregation on what our message is, what the gospel is, and what the church is all about. Now, those of you who've been hanging around me for a while know I have a few of those stories that I tell from time to time. There's the story of Jean Valjean from Les Mis. Uh, there's the story of the prodigal son that Jesus tells. And every once in a while during important times, I'll pull those stories out just to remind us of what the gospel is about and who we are. 
Well, tonight is one of those nights, and uh, when we were planning this service several months ago, we had no idea it was going to be like it is today. So we knew this would be a big moment for us, but we didn't know it would be such a big moment in the world. So I'm going to pull out a story that I've told several times before. And some of you have heard it before, some of you have never heard it before, but the, the whole good thing about a great story is if it's a great story, it's worth hearing again and again. So I want to tell a story tonight to sort of launch us into a few thoughts about what it means to be community of grace for such a time as this. Before we talk about it, let's pray together. Gracious God, as we get ready to talk for a few minutes about this moment in history that really blindsided us and has caught so many of us so unaware and we're still trying to figure out what's going on. In this moment when we're celebrating 15 years of ministry and thought we knew what the world would look like when we stepped into year 16 and now everything's changed. And yet what hasn't changed is your call on our lives to share the bold, reckless grace of Jesus with the world around us. And so as we talk about that call, I pray that those of us who call this our church home would be re-inspired uh, to roll up our sleeves and get at it. And for those who are listening in, that they would hear the story of God's grace for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So many, many years ago now, I went up to Las Vegas to see my good friend B.J. Thomas in concert. And uh, many of you know that uh, he is a good friend of our congregation. He's done several concerts here. And he was kind enough to send us a little video to congratulate us on our 15th anniversary. It's posted on our Facebook page. Uh, for those of you who are very, very young, like Pastor Kathleen, who have no idea who I'm talking about, uh, B.J. Thomas has had a hit of string records over the years from Hooked on a Feeling to Rock and Roll Lullaby, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. And uh, he's just become a good friend of this congregation, loves all of you, and uh, considers us to be his church home. So I went up to see him several years ago. He was singing in a Las Vegas casino showroom right in the heart of the Vegas Strip. And it was a big room. It was packed. BJ fans, of course. And when BJ came out to sing, he did what he always does. He's done that here every time he's come. He just starts singing one hit song after another. And then in the middle of the show... As he always does, as he does here every time he comes, he started to sing some gospel music. Now, up to that point, people were engaged, they were clapping, they were laughing at his jokes, they were really into the show. But as soon as he started to sing the song Amazing Grace, something amazing happened in that showroom. It was like a holy hush descended on that place. And I looked around at that Vegas casino showroom, and I saw people all through that hall men and women wiping tears from their eyes. And then BJ invited us to sing, and I sat there in amazement as that entire Vegas casino showroom sang Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. It was as if church had broken out on the Vegas Strip, which isn't too far from the truth, because what happened is that grace broke into that moment. For some of the people there, grace gro broke into their shame and their guilt and their brokenness and their lostness. For others, that grace, that grace broke through with love and compassion and forgiveness. For all of us, that grace blindsided us. Because you don't expect to go to Vegas in a casino showroom or a casino and expect to find grace or for grace to show up, and yet that's exactly what happened. Grace showed up, and it brought hope, and it brought peace, and it brought relief. And that's what God's grace does. God's grace is the good news that God loves us. Grace is the good news that God sent Jesus into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Grace is the good news that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's the good news that there is no longer any condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's the good news that a Savior has been born for you and for all people. It's the good news that we have a Heavenly Father who runs to us, and He runs to us not out of condemnation or judgment, not out of anger, but He always runs to us out of unconditional love. And when He finds us, he clothes us with that robe of grace. He puts the shoes of forgiveness onto our feet. He puts the ring of sonship or daughterhood onto our fingers. And then he throws this lavish banquet for us where we're the guest of honor to celebrate God's lavish, generous love given to us through Jesus. 
Grace is the radical, amazing news that God so loves you, God so loved the world that he sent Jesus. He gave Jesus for us. Now, for 15 years, we have been laser-focused on that message. And we've been sharing that message in a variety of ways over the last 15 years. We share it every weekend when we get together for worship and we share the sacraments together. We do it when we get together for Bible studies or other events. We do it through our Christmas shows and our Disney shows. We do it in our work with Lake Pleasant Mobile Home Park Estates or with our partnership in Rwanda or by packing meals in this facility for Feed My Starving Children, having packed over a million of them now. For 15 years, we have been following Jesus on the bold, reckless adventure of bringing grace to the world, and we're just getting started. We are only 15 years old. In real life, you can't even get a learner's permit at 15 years of age. We're just getting started. And if we've learned anything in this last month, it's that the world needs churches like Grace now more than ever. The world is afraid. The world is broken. The world is reeling. And the world needs churches of grace, like ours, to stand up for the world, to stand by the world, and to share with them this love of God that says no matter what you're going through, God has not abandoned you. God has you. God will get you through this. For 15 years, that has been our passion. For 15 years, God has used us at various times throughout our history to make a difference in the world. And now here we are at such a time as this, in a crisis no one anticipated, a crisis none of us ever saw, a crisis, quite frankly, most of us really don't know how it's going to end. And that's why the church needs grace. That's why the church needs you. Because God called this church 15 years ago to share the love of Jesus. And I want to thank you for 15 years of being faithful to that call. So this is a big moment for us. It's a big moment in our history and it's a big moment in our world. And I was going to do this anyway, so it's just going to feel a little different tonight because we have to do it uh, via our, our screen time. But I want to invite you, if Community of Grace is your church home, I want to invite you today to join me in recommitting to this mission and ministry. If you believe in what God is doing here, if this church has been there for you and you want to be in this church for other people, then I want to invite you to join those of us in the room, we have masses of people, five or six, and to join us as we recommit ourselves to this ministry. Now, what does it mean to recommit to a church? I think it means several things. I think it means, first of all, that we will recommit to pray for each other. And we've been doing a lot of that. Every night, Monday through Friday, we get together at 6 o'clock and we pray together. And I encourage you to continue to pray for your church, for your leaders, for each other, and for the world around you. I think it also means that we worship together regularly. Now, we, we can't do that in this building right now. We can do it through live stream. But once the doors open again, it's important for us to be together. And I think probably for a lot of us, it's been easy to sort of take church for granted, to take worship for granted. We can go anytime we want, and now suddenly we can't. And I think we're going to find, I think the world's going to find that it's important to be together again and to talk about important things, things with substance. And so I hope you'll make a, a new commitment to worship as regularly as you can. I think it also means that we will support this church financially and to continue to give to the mission of this church because the only way that we finance anything that we do is through the giving of our people. And it's through your giving that we're able to make a difference. And tonight I want to let you know one of the things that you're doing is we have set aside $15,000 in honor of our 15th anniversary and all of that money will be designated to help people who are going through crisis during this time. So I think we recommit to uh, financing this place, and then we just recommit to being involved, being involved in the missions. Maybe it's uh, helping with Lake Pleasant Mobile Home Park Estates, or it's feeding starving children in our food packs. There are a lot of different ways to be involved. I think that's what it means to recommit to our church. And so if you'd like to make that recommitment, I'm going to ask you to do two things. First of all, uh, w when we were going to do this here, we were just having you sign a little piece of paper and bring it up front can't do that today, but you can do it in the comments. So if you want to re-up your commitment to Community of Grace and, and you, you want to do it publicly, and you don't have to, but you want to do it publicly, in the comment you could do several things. Just give us a thumbs up, or say, I'm in, or say, we're in, and if you want to give us your names, you can give us your names. But this is our opportunity to say to one another, this is my church, 
this is the church I'm committed to. This is where God is using me, and I want to make a difference through community of grace for the world today for such a time as this. So that's the first thing I want to ask you to do, and you can do that right now. Just start putting your thumbs up, and uh, I'm in, we're in, however you want to do that. And then the second thing I want you to do, and this is going to seem a little weird, but if you're able to stand, I want you to stand. And I want to pray with you, I want to pray for you, I want to pray for our church as we make this recommitment to following Jesus into this moment in our history. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, it has been an amazing 15 years. I think back to that very first Sunday, Easter Sunday, setting up all the chairs and cleaning out all the corners of that school, and then to see people walking in, 500 people coming for our first worship service. And then to watch over the months as we were able to become a, an organized congregation, an official church of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. How we moved through those months and years at that school and supporting Zuni Hills in a lot of different ways, being mission to them. And then how we had the opportunity to vote on this land that was given to us and to vote in the midst of recession to build this campus. And this campus that we've come to love and that we really miss right now because we can't be here. And how we walked people through the Great Recession. And now here we are, Heavenly Father, at this crucial time in history. And you have called us to roll up our sleeves and to follow Jesus on the bold, reckless adventure of bringing grace to a world in the grip of pandemic, in the grip of fear. And so, Heavenly Father, for those who want to recommit, I thank you for the recommitment. For those who are thinking about it, thank you for them thinking about it. And Heavenly Father, I pray that we would continue to follow you on this bold, reckless adventure of bringing grace to the world, and may it start with us as we now, in this moment of communion, experience that unconditional love and grace of Jesus that always comes to us, that always blindsides us, that always enters into the moment and fills us with hope and with life and forgiveness. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.